can take a few minutes to explain how to use the GoToWebinar technology. In particular, I'm going to show you how to use some of the features that allow that allows us to make our presentation more interactive. You should see the control panel pictured on your screen right now. If you don't, it's because it's been minimized and you can pull it back out by going to the grab tab, which is B, which hides and shows the control panel. There's also an attendees list, which is A, where you can see all of the participants on the call. If you have a question, you can raise your hand by clicking on the hand icon on the control panel and I can unmute your line. Another way to participate is through the question pane, which is B. You can type your question in the question pane and I can read it to the group or respond privately. All of the panes can be expanded or minimized by clicking on the plus or minus button that are at the top left of each pane. In the past, we've had some audio trouble, so if for some reason you're, ex you're experiencing difficulty being heard, you will want to make sure that you're not muted on your personal phone and that you've entered the audio pin provided to you at the beginning of the call. If that doesn't work, you can hang up and call back and be sure to enter the audio pin. Great. Thank you, Destiny. So welcome to Achieving the Dreams webinar on the Retail Pathways Initiative. We're, this is Meredith Hatch, and we are so excited that you have joined us today. Um, Destiny um, is part of the team that's supporting this Retail Pathways Initiative, and she just gave a quick overview about how to use GoToWebinar. So thank you, Destiny. So to introduce us, um, this is Meredith Hatch. I'm Senior Associate Director of Workforce and Academic Alignment here at Achieving the Dream. And I'm joined today uh, by Mayen Ireland. Mayen is an Associate Director of Programs and Policy here at Achieving the Dream. Um, Cindy Lenhart is our Vice President for Community College Relations. And then Destiny Mitchell, who just um, gave an introduction about how to use the GoToWebinar platform. Uh, we make up the Retail Pathways team here at Achieving the Dream. And so you'll be working with us over the next 19 months as you work to strengthen the Retail Pathways at your college. Great. So to give you a little bit of a roadmap for what we want to get done today, We'll first provide an overview of the Retail Pathways Initiative and goals. Then we'll do a few more introductions and we'll hear from each of the college representatives that are on the call today. And we've also asked one representative from each college to provide a, a brief three-minute overview of their proposal for this grant. We'll also hear introductions from our technical assistance team and our evaluation team. Then we'll get into some of the specific expectations from the colleges for this grant as well as key dates and deadlines. Then we'll talk about next steps, including the award announcement, and we have plenty of time for any questions or discussion that you want to have today. Thank you, Mayen. And we'll go to the next slide. Great, so a quick overview of the Retail Pathways Initiative. There's three main components of this initiative. The first is a survey of ATD colleges where we're looking at the current status of certificate and degree programs in retail, as well as collaboration with retail employers. And we're excited to announce that that closes today, and we have 114 colleges that have responded to that survey out of our 200 in the network, which is a, a response rate that we're really excited about. So we'll look forward to putting together a webinar for you on the findings of that survey later in the summer. The other component of the Retail Pathways Initiative is you all and you're the, the heart of the work that's happening here. So we selected four Achieving a Dream Colleges to develop um, or strengthen their short-term retail credentials. The third component of this initiative is the external evaluation and we've contracted with Bragg and Associates who you'll hear from in a few minutes uh, to provide that external evaluation as a way for us to really learn from the work that you all are doing and disseminate findings. 
So aligned with some of that overview are the goals of this initiative. Uh, the first being to increase the capacity um, and of the colleges that are selected for this grant in order to strengthen the retail pathways um, towards those middle skill careers. And also to strengthen capacity around collecting, analyzing, and using data, particularly labor market data. A second goal is to meet the, the needs of the local retail employers. And then finally, as I mentioned, with the external evaluation to provide the community college sector with some new information and tools relating to pathway and retail um, pathways in particular. So thank you, Mayen. I appreciate that overview of the initiative. Um, this is Meredith, and here's the really exciting part of the webinar. Um, this is where we're going to have um, a representative from each of your institutions um, introduce um, your college as well as provide a little bit of information about your proposal. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unmute all of your lines. Um, and uh, once I've done that, I'll let you know. And I would like a representative from Umpqua Community College to start us off. So one moment while I do a little unmuting. Okay, do we have a representative from Umpqua Community College on the line? I have uh, unmuted yeah. everyone's line. Okay. Hi, this is Martha Joyce. Can you hear me? Yes, Martha, we can. Okay, so I'm Martha Joyce. I'm the business department chair at Umpqua Community College. Uh, UCC is located in rural Oregon. It is uh, probably about 200 miles south of Portland, which is our largest metro area, and we have around 100,000 uh, people in our county, which UCC serves. And um, so in the overview, you wanted us to talk about our proposed work, right? Yes, please. Okay, so our goal, uh, main goal, is to move students relatively quickly through our pathway certificates. We have um, an existing eight-course retail certificate, and we haven't yet created a pathway into our marketing degree, but we have our paperwork poised and ready to go for fall term. And then we have a four-course pathway certificate that we just um, submitted to the state of Oregon for approval. And another thing um, that we want to do is create contextualized learning opportunities. We've identified two specific courses that um, we'll work on to create a little supportive learning for our students. And we want to work with our lo local employers to ensure that our students are receiving the right education with the right learning outcomes and are ready to go to work and or position themselves for promotion. So we think these things will really help in recruiting students, um, and it will help us to improve our recruiting. And finally, we want to create and use systems for using the right data to make solid program decisions, as well as track our students. Excellent. Thank you so much, Martha. I appreciate that great up update from Oregon. You're welcome. Um, next Next, we have um, Tallahassee Community College in Florida. A representative from Tallahassee? Sure. Hi, Meredith. It's Kim Moore. How are you? Doing great, Kim. Good to hear your voice. If you could provide a short overview about your college's proposal. Absolutely. I, I will follow suit in terms of giving a description of our community. Tallahassee actually sits in the Florida's, we're actually the, in the Florida's capital. Um, we have approximately 15,000 students that um, take part in what we believe the College of Choice experience here. And there's about 275,000 people that um, are part of that population here. Um, in terms of our proposal and project, we are very excited for a number of reasons. 
um, the first of which retail actually makes up the top 10, three of the top 10 occupations that are in demand in our region. Additionally, three of the top 15 statewide. So we certainly understand that here's a great opportunity to teach local and statewide employers as well and prepare to build this range of work. Um, to that end, what we endeavor to do is create a seamless pathway, if you will, for students interested in retail. That would include not only single online course offerings, but also certificate offerings coupled with AA and or AS degree options that would then matriculate over to our students. Things that we envision um, coming out as a result of this in terms of the goals is that there will be increased number of individuals that will pursue this as a field of choice. Um, we anticipate that there will be expanded awareness among our students, community, and employers. And ultimately that there will be individuals that go into employment as well as what we're calling the value add, um, an opportunity to create new businesses. Um, through the new business focus, we have actually built in an entrepreneurial component by way of great partnerships here in our community, and they include our Downtown Improvement Authority, the Executive Director, um, Florida State's Jim Moran Institute, and the Florida um, Federal Retail Association. Now, with that, students will have an opportunity to be exposed to, one, creating um, employment, creating jobs, creating a business, while at the same time, they'll also have an opportunity to become a little part of Florida's retail engine. Um, we believe that not only does that meet the employer need, but it also uh, meets our, I call it our labor force and workforce need because we're going to uh, strengthen Florida's economy. And that, in a nutshell, would be our proposal. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kim. You're welcome. Um, Next, do we have a representative from Durham Technical Community College in North Carolina? Just going to make sure that all of my lines are unmuted. Derek, were you going to provide an update from Durham Tech? Anyone on the line from Durham Tech? All right. I'm so, um, Alicia Long. Oh, hello. I'm Hi, sorry. Lauren. Hi, okay. I was waiting for um, Dr. Drakeford to come in and speak. Um, okay. But my name is Alicia Lawrence. I'm the coordinator of the business administration program at Durham Tech. Mm -hmm. And what we would like to do is um, utilize this to create a bridge between our continuing education programs, programs here and our programs within the curriculum side. Um, they already have a really strong um, retail and customer service program in continuing education, so we're just going to bridge that with our Associate of Applied Science and Business Administration, as well as our other certificate programs such as entrepreneurship, marketing, management, um, and there's one more business core. Excellent. Thanks, thanks for jumping in at the last minute. We appreciate oh, that's that. Okay. <laughs> oh, here's Dr. Drakeford. Hey, okay. this is Derek Drakeford. For some reason, uh, my computer microphone was not working. But I do want to tell you guys, we're excited about things that are happening in Durham Tech. Durham County does have over 300,000 citizens. We also have a uh, Orange County campus, and Orange County has over 150,000 citizens. Through this grant and through this program, we're going to be able to have a pathway that offers 11 credentials for students. We're excited about it. We're happy to be on the team, and I thank you for your support. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Um, and so now we're going to uh, shift from Durham, North Carolina to Florida. Um, do we have a representative from Broward College on the line to give a quick introduction? Yeah. 
Hello, this is... Hello. Hello, this is, hi, this is Stephanie Etter. I'm the Dean for Business and Management at Broward College. Um, I was not the person scheduled to, uh, <laughs> to give the introduction, but since I don't hear anyone else speaking up, I will gladly do so. Thanks, um, Stephanie. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Broward County is probably most commonly known as the home of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, we're, uh, we're home to about more than 1.8 million residents of which 53,000 of them attend uh, Broward College at one of our three main campuses or our centers. Uh, through this particular grant, we hope to provide um, an additional focus on the top industries which that, that are here, which include hospitality and, of course, the retail industry that directly supports our hospitality industry. Currently, we have a 12 set 12 credit certificate that's not specifically named retail but does have um, a retail focus. We would like to strengthen the curriculum as well as our partnerships with the retail businesses in this area. We've already uh, engaged in some discussions with potential uh, internship pathways, uh, workforce development pathways, etc. and in this grant is an excellent way to build those relationships. Excellent. Thank you so much, Stephanie. We appreciate your update from Fort Lauderdale. Um, now we're going to switch gears just a little bit. Um, if, if you will, if you hold your questions about um, your colleagues at other colleges' programs till the end of the webinar, we're going to have a great opportunity for some question and answer. Um, and next up, we're going to um, just to give a quick introduction to the technical assistance and evaluation team. So um, we have an excellent technical assistance team, um, and we're going to have a second webinar that's going to go in depth on the technical assistance that Achieving the Dream is going to sub provide um, to support your institution throughout this initiative. Um, but we want to give just a, a minute for um, our technical assistance team members to give an introdu introduction to themselves and about their experience and background and interest in the project. Um, so first we have Donna Dare, who's joining us as the Pathways expert. Greetings, everyone. Greetings, everyone. Hello, Donna. Hi. Hi, Donna. Hi. We'd love for you to just give a quick introduction and talk just a, a minute about your experience and background as well as your interest in the project. I'd be happy to do that. I'm very excited about being part of this project. I am currently, at least uh, until June 30th, the Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at St. Louis Community College. I'll be retiring from that position um, on July 1st and I'm looking forward to some exciting work around pathways that I've had certainly a lot of passion and vision around for mm, in the neighborhood of 25 years. So. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about pathways, started uh, dealing with pathways initiatives um, in the not-for-profit sector many, many years ago, had an opportunity to work with Dr. Bragg at University of Illinois doing some national evaluation work around pathways type initiatives and have continued to retain that focus. Um, most, most recently was a co-author of a trilogy of articles that were in the Community College Journal uh, with, with Kay McClinney focusing on um, general design principles and some of the issues around pathways and future directions for community colleges around that. I did oversee our Achieving the Dream initiative here at St. Louis Community College. We, uh, like many of you, we've had fits and starts with pathways, so I certainly can feel your pain and, and know by experience that what seems uh, theoretically good on paper is not always so easy to implement, but certainly have a lot of interest in and experience with dealing with some of the essential components of the Pathways initiatives and, and certainly um, hoping to work with all of the schools to align that, this work with your larger Achieving the Dream work and the larger work of your institutions um, and see where Pathways can take us and dealing with the future for our students. Great. Thank you so much, Donna, for your introduction. Um, now I'd like to introduce Trudy Bears. And um, Trudy is going to serve as the cross-college data coach. Trudy? Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay. My name is Trudy Burrs. I retired from Oakton Community College on Halloween 2013. I was the Director of Institutional Research Curriculum and Strategic Planning there. That's an odd portfolio, but what it meant is in addition to IR and strategic planning, which often fit together, I did a lot of work with faculty, four-year colleges, high schools to develop pathways and joint curricula and alignment and try to make things more seamless to students. Uh, that's not an easy task, as you all know. I've been an ATD data coach since the second year of the initiative. I've worked with 12 ATD colleges, and I'm just thrilled to be working with you four, none of which I've worked with before. Uh, and my role in this endeavor is to work both with Donna in terms of helping ensure that as you develop your pathways, there's thought given to the kind of data and information you want to collect along the way, and also to work with Bragg and Associates to ensure that the data that you need to collect or you will need to collect for evaluation aligns with other purposes for data collection that you might have, is done as simply as possible. That doesn't mean it will be simple. Notice I said as simply as possible. And to try to collect data in a way that you can make multiple uses of the data and think about how to present the data to foster conversation and use, not just to file a report. And I, too, am just delighted to be working on this project. We, we have whole new areas to explore together. Thank you so much, Trudy. We're really glad to have you on the line and as part of this project. Thank um, you. As Mayan mentioned earlier, Achieving the Dream um, has engaged with a third-party evaluation team for this initiative. And that's a team from Bragg and Associates. Today we have John Cosgrove and Maggie Cosgrove on the line. And we're hoping that you can give just a quick introduction um, to yourselves and a little bit about your background. Maggie? Hi. Hi, this is Maggie Cosgrove. Actually, um, what you have today is me. I'm representing the evaluation team, which, Excellent. Uh, consists, of, uh, great, which consists of Deb Bragg, John Cosgrove, and me. And um, first, I'd like to add our congratulations to the four colleges. This is a pretty exciting project, and we are all um, eager to begin work on it. So uh, Deb, John, and I are, we like to refer to ourselves as a seasoned team of evaluators. And um, th that's just a nicer word than we've been around for a long time. Um, but community colleges have been the focus of our work, of our research, and of our evaluation efforts for many years. In fact, um, Deb, as uh, Donna mentioned earlier, founded and has led the Office of Community College Research and Leadership at the University of Illinois. While John and I bring community college research, uh, program management, and evaluation experience to the team. And uh, we, we really like the way that we work together and bring out um, the better nuances of each other's work. So our goal throughout this project is to help you at the colleges learn and get the most possible from this project. Um, we want to observe and evaluate as you go along the way, um, along this innovation pathway to get the career pathway model um, to the point where it works at your institution. And then also to measure the impact of that model on students and on students' progress uh, throughout the, their careers at your institution. So we'll do this through a combination of implementation and impact evaluation. And we envision that we'll be, be, we will be working closely with Donna and Trudy in this um, endeavor. We are, we are really particularly interested in career pathways. Uh, we've been looking into uh, similarities among these pathway models, but we are actually fascinated by the way the context and the culture at each of your institutions will impact how they evolve um, at your colleges. So we're here to begin, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Great. Thank you so much, Maggie. Um, so that was an excellent introduction to the technical assistance and evaluation team. Um, and now I'd like to pass the microphone back to Mayen, who's going to talk a little bit more about the resources and support you'll receive from Achieving the Dream over the next 19 months. Great, thanks. So now, as Meredith mentioned, we're going to get into a few more of the specifics of the grant. Um, and in terms of the resources and support that each college will receive, the first is the, the monetary support, so $112,000 per college. Um, 
in two installments. The first will be coming $75,000 um, after the grant agreements have been signed, hopefully in, in June. And then the second coming, the second, uh, the remaining amount of that money coming in, in the slide it says May, but in the grant agreement and in our other slides it's, it's actually June. So I apologize for that typo. June of 2016, and that will be contingent on uh, providing an interim financial report, which is built into the, the timeline that we'll talk about in a few slides. Additionally, we'll be providing uh, resources and support in the form of the technical assistance team that you've just heard from, as well as the Achieving the Dream staff who will provide guidance and support. Um, additionally, you've already heard from the evaluation team. Another component of the resources that you will receive is an additional visit from your Achieving the Dream data and leadership coach. Uh, and this is a part of the grant that we're excited about because for, for most of the schools, I think for all four actually, you are currently on, in the model of receiving one visit per year and this will give you an additional visit from your data and leadership coaches. And then finally, the cross-grantee networking, which we will happen in a couple different forums. One is through the in-person convening that will happen at Dream 2016. Um, as well as other ways that we hope to provide networking opportunity and sharing of, of findings and resources. So those are some of the resources and support that will be used to support your work um, in order to meet some of the expectations that we have for you. And these are not necessarily new to anyone. These are, are listed in the RFP, but we wanted to spend just a few minutes to go through them um, and then see at the end of, of our discussion if there are any questions. So first is creating or strengthening a short-term uh, retail pathway that's nested and aligned within a larger cohesive retail pathway. Additionally, as we ask you to budget uh, in your grant budget, is to send a small team to participate in an all-grantee convening at Dream 2016, which will be in Atlanta, Georgia. Additionally, as I mentioned, is some of the goals for the initiative. Uh, our expectation is that you're also building on your existing relationships with retail employers to help identify competencies and create a pipeline for hiring students um, and the ways in which those competencies will, will be used from, among the graduates. We also I have mentioned before the importance of collecting, analyzing, and using labor market information as well as student level data as an important feature of the design that you create and you strengthen your retail pathway. We also hope that you'll be creating and implementing professional development for instructors and advisors um, as a way to effectively respond to the uh, employer-identified um, curriculum changes and competencies. Additionally, we hope you'll be working collaboratively with the external evaluators um, throughout the project. Um, and helping share in the student level data that will be important for the evaluation. Another expectation is to share and disseminate the, outcoming, the, sorry, the outcomes and the best practices that we identify with partners. We really hope that this grant will position you to become models for the field and want to make sure that we're disseminating the best practices that you identify. And then finally, our hope is that this work will live beyond the, the, the grant period and that you'll be able to create uh, implementation plans that will help you sustain this pathway ex, ex, um, the pathway efforts and expand that to other areas of your institution. Diane, thank you for sharing a little bit about the expectations related to this retail, um, retail pathways initiative. Um, I want to switch gears just a little bit, this is Meredith, and um, talk about something that you may have been wondering about, which is announcing the grant. We know that this is a really, really exciting effort, um, and so um, but we do ask that you do not make any public announcement of this grant. Um, you may certainly share this within your institution, um, but we ask that you wait for an external announcement. Um, we're excited to share that we have um, joined an agreement with a communications firm called Anthology, Anthology Communications, and they're going to support the strategic communication of this initiative so that we can really broadcast this widely. Um, 
that being said, um, Anthology Communications is now finalizing a communications plan, and so we're going to find the very right point in time to make an announcement about this grant and what it means for your colleges. Um, so in other words, um, hold tight, and we will certainly be sharing those plans for a national announcement um, quite soon. Now, this, this slide is in the, you know, the no-nos of PowerPoint 101, but um, we do want to have a representation of some of the key dates and deadlines that are coming up. Um, Megan mentioned that um, you're going to be receiving your uh, grant agreement shortly, and we do ask for those to be um, shared back with Achieving the Dream within seven days after receipt. Um, we also are ex excited that you have a, a little bit of a planning period over the summer before some fall implementation. Um, and so we know that you're quite busy at each of your institutions. Um, now that you've received notice of, of, this, of this grant award, um, gearing up to do some really important work. Um, you're going to have some specific site visits from some of the folks that you have heard from on the phone today, from the evaluation team, um, as well as the retail pathways support team, so um, Donna Dare and Trudy Bears. Um, who are going to visit your colleges um, and will work with you to schedule that time. Um, you will have several um, reports coming up, um, none too soon, um, but um, be gearing up for a wintertime um, financial and narrative report as well as, as some, a few shorter um, narrative check-ins um, throughout the year. Um, You'll also want to, as Mayan mentioned earlier, um, start thinking about um, who, which representatives your college will send to DREAM 2016, where we're going to have an in-person convening specifically related um, to this retail initiative. Um, and um, then we'll have several other check-in points throughout the 19 months moving forward. So, just a quick reminder about some of the key dates and deadlines. Um, this timeline um, that is in front of you on your screen is something that is actually from the RFP, so that's a, a good reference point. Um, and so now um, Mei Yen's going to talk just a little bit about the next steps before we go into some question and answer. Great, thank you. Yeah, so when, as we look at the immediate next steps for you to be aware of, the first is that we, this is the first of two webinars that we are holding to kick off the grant work. The second webinar, there's a new time which you'll note on this slide, and I will send out the registration info to everyone on this call. Um, the second webinar will be focusing on the technical assistance support and the work of the evaluation team. And that will be on Wednesday, July 1st at 1 p.m. Eastern. Another next step is that Achieving the Dream will be following up with each of the colleges to schedule individual calls with the college team where we'll discuss some more of the specific grant logistics and scheduling site visits as they pertain to the particular needs of your institution. The grant agreements went out this morning from our CFO, Mark Modeman, through our secure electronic signature system. Uh, so actually, I think two colleges have already returned those, which is great. Um, and uh, as indicated in the grant agreement, it's, you have three weeks from today to submit that, so by July 7th. So I know many institutions will be eager to get those back, um, as that is the next step in receiving the funding. Uh, additionally, I mentioned this earlier, that we will be having a webinar in early August, that's the hope, that will report out on the findings from our Retail Pathways survey. And then finally, again, you've heard this several times now, uh, gearing up for our all grantee meeting at DREAM 2016. So those, that's just an overview of the immediate next steps, and we'd like to now open it up for any questions or comments. So um, just feel free to ask your questions or comments. Your lines are open, and so, um, so you can just voice them, and we will be able to respond.
it often takes a, a couple minutes just to think of some of the questions that you might be wondering. So um, questions about um, each college's programs, their proposals, um, any timeline questions you might have. It is also possible, though not likely, that we have provided oh. an extremely comprehensive... Oh, great, there is a question. <laughs> is there can a anyone, anyone yep. hear my... we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, okay we just managed to get the uh, sound aspect here. This is the Associate Dean, uh, Paul Moore speaking. I'm here with Stephen Gross. From Broward College. Oh, excellent. Yes. We've been on since two. <laughs> We've been on since the beginning of the call. My, my question is, how much access will we have to you with uh, you all specifically in terms of working out the details of, of how to get uh, all of the particulars covered? I mean, will we have access to you all on a fairly reasonable basis for questions and, and other things that may arise? Yes, the answer is yes, absolutely. So um, in particular, um, questions should come to, so this is Meredith Hatch speaking, and um, May Yen and I, along with others at Achieving the Dream, are working very, very closely on this initiative. And so we see um, this is one opportunity, but we're also scheduling individual calls with your college so we can start off that open communication and then throughout the 19 months of this initiative, absolutely, um, we will be able to work very closely with you on logistics or anything else. Thank you. You're welcome. This is Trudy Burrs. Am I allowed to ask a question? Yes, Trudy. <laughs> okay. Uh, two quick things. First of all, I'm assuming, uh, this is not actually a question, that you'll make these slides available afterwards? Yes, absolutely. So we'll send the PowerPoint. The other thing that we've done, and, and we're hoping that the recording quality is high, is we will share a recorded version of this webinar um, so that you can share it with members of your team who were not able to participate today or if there are points that you want to go back to. That's certainly a possibility. Great, and, and this really is a question. Will you okay. be putting together some sort of synthesis of the each college's project so they can share that with one another? Sure, so I think there are a couple ways to go about that, and we can share some, some simple um, kind of project descriptions um, from those proposals. And then as, as time progresses, I think it, it may be the case that colleges will be willing to share um, really significant aspects of their programming with each other. That's something that we mean by cross-grantee networking because you're, you're um, taking different approaches to doing something that is in some cases quite similar. So being able to learn from each other will be a key component to this initiative. No, what is fucking going on? Any other questions, Trudy? No. Okay, thanks. Others on the line? Okay. We'll, we'll give one more minute, and then we'll say our goodbyes for today. Uh, I have a question. This is Fortin from Broward College. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes. yes. I, is this the first year this grant has been awarded, or are there other schools that have participated in this? And if you have any... Um, I guess a uh, <clears throat> framework we could uh, look at as we move forward with this. Sure. So that's a great question. So I'll, I'll answer the first part. Um, is the first is this the first time this grant has been awarded? And the answer is yes. Um, this is the first specific pathways grant, in fact, that Achieving the Dream has um, worked with institutions on as a specific learning initiative. Um, so you are the first four colleges to have received um, funds from Achieving the Dream to support this kind of work. Um, that being said, um, the Retail Pathways support team, uh, together with Achieving the Dream, will be providing um, good information from um, previous successes that might help inform your work and your plans for implementation to make it um, a little easier. 
Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. This is Donna. If I may ask a, uh, somewhat of a logistics question. Sure. We, uh, Trudy and I have talked about the timing for our first visit, and we're concerned um, with waiting till September, but by the same token, uh, we know probably the, the late summer and August schedule, people are not going to be available to focus on this work anyway. I know there will be planning work that you all are doing at the institutions, but right now our tentative plan is to plan our visits toward the middle to the end of September. Um, I'd, I'd appreciate feedback on whether or not that's a viable option for the different colleges and if your thinking is in line with ours that that timing would be about right. So college representatives on the line, uh, a question about uh, site visits in terms of a late September time frame. Would that work for say Umpqua? Um, it should be fine. Hello. Uh, Broward, would that timeline work for you? That timeline may work. Okay. Okay. And, and we can have some more discussions uh, with Broward specifically in the in the in, in the phone call that we have individually with your institution. That would be great. Okay. Great. And I'll apologize now. This is Meredith. Um, Achieving the dream you'll learn as you work with us for a couple of years. We're located in Silver Spring, Maryland, and we're very close to a train. So you have probably hearing train noises throughout the webinar. <laughs> yeah. So, um, one quick question. This is. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, go ahead. This is Derek Drake Ford from Durham Technical Community College. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we're excited about getting the word out to recruit new and potentially new students. So our question is, I know you have a consulting firm that's going to do the media blast. Does mm -hmm. they have a range of, of time that they were looking at getting that message out? Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll be able to share that soon. I, I, would, I would give the guidance, though, that um, you don't, I would say you don't have to hold off on recruitment. It would be specifically in announcing that you're working on this initiative with Achieving the Dream and, and have received grant funding for it. So I, I, I don't think that that would change much of your messaging to potential students, if that makes sense, Derek. It makes sense. I thank you. Meredith, this is Kim Moore at TCC, Tallahassee Community College. Thanks, Kim. Hi. Um, quick question related to the site visit that you were just speaking of. Mm -hmm. Is sure. there maybe a template or information that what would be expected or anticipated that would have occurred, or are we just to look to what we submitted in our proposal as the timeline of activity? Kim, that's, that's an excellent question. And um, yes, absolutely, we will be sharing a specific template about the site visit. But, but also, um, you may recall in the request for proposals, there's some time for you right now to be um, building upon your proposal and really um, making that into an implementation plan. And that's something um, that we're going to discuss in, discuss in the next webinar um, on July 1st, but that's something you'll certainly be able to do and have support doing um, from Achieving the Dream and uh, the Retail Pathways support team. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Any other questions? Um, we will be scheduling phone calls with each of the institutions on the line today so we can have a, 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 a more of a dialogue. Other questions before we hop off the webinar? OK. Well, thank you so much for participating in today's webinar. We are really, really excited to be working with you. Um, know that your applications were selected in a competitive, a very competitive process, in fact. Um, and we are excited to be working with you as you um, build stronger pathways. 
um, within your institutions and for students into the workforce and further educational opportunities. So again, thank you for taking the time today. And Achieving the Dream, we'll be back in touch with you very soon. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.